Hey guys, my name is Forbarnon, and welcome to episode 13 of our server survival series. So, the plan for today's episode is we're going to be making a brand new mine. And I know what you guys are thinking, why do we need a new mine? Why is this going to be the new task? And very simply, because the old mine, the one that's right next to our storage system, isn't big enough. And it's also in a really awkward position. Because we have the... We're going to be putting a slime farm down there. We're going to be... We have the abandoned mine shaft to deal with. And the underground is not that far away. But I did decide to add a little crane system to make it look nice. And I mean, we have an iron farm and coal. We have stacks of blocks of it. And so I figured putting some iron and coal ore on there just to make it look a little more... Just more would be nice. And I mean, that's really the most of what we pulled out of that farm. Um... And I also kind of realized that I just wanted a place where I could I could mine without having to deal with mom going, hey, this is uh, against what I'm liking for my mine. So now we have something that's a little, at least the outside's a little more aesthetic. Um, so the area that I'm in now is going to be the entryway. And there's going to be two separate parts. There's going to be the entryway to the mine and then there's going to be the mine itself. And I really like the way that the stairs are done with the cobblestone on the outside and the smooth stone on the inside, giving it that path-like way. And then this was the first take on what we wanted to do. And we really liked the, lan the multi-level lanterns. Uh, soul lanterns don't give off as much light as regular lanterns do, but they still add to the aesthetic. And as I was sitting there looking at it, I kind of decided that I didn't like having it just be open and empty with lanterns just kind of in your way and in your face. And that little indent in the wall there is going to be where we put a gate in. It's going to be a spruce log gate, and it's going to be a little more torn down, dilapidated, because I want to make this place look like an archaeological site. At least that was what the design was after this. And after about three to five hours of tinkering around, I figured out how I wanted everything to look. So we have our archaeological site. Um, so we have the four pillars that was originally holding up the thing. At least that's the idea. We have chains hanging down where lanterns used to be. And in here is going to be a sorting system. And I want to have minecarts going through the mine, at least to some, I guess you call them key checkpoints. And then I want to make a sorting system that sorts out all the goodies. And then there's going to be a catch-all chest that anything that we just dump in there that doesn't fit in the sorting system will go into those chests. And honestly, I might do a shulker box sorter. I really don't know yet. Um... At least the shulker box compaction system. And I know we haven't gotten to the end yet, but I could always set up a shulker box compacting system and then root the thing, just kind of make a temporary bypass around it and then root it in later. But as for the actual design of the mine, I like the outside of it. Personally, I think it adds a little more. Then I decided to add some signs, you know, saying that it's an ar it's an active archaeological site, and it's just a little more different. And also, with the the reason that the fountain is there is because the entrance to the mine is one over to the entrance to the city, and. It was more work than it was worth to either A, move the wall over one, or B, move the 
wall in the mine over one. So I just made a little fountain there. And we can always add extra roads later on, going to separate things. I mean, we could even add a little bit of a populated cultured area outside the front gate, making it a little safer. Um, but as for the mine itself, I'm liking where it's going. And I do want to apologize for a bit of a shorter episode this week. I mean, there wasn't really a lot that was interesting to watch, even in a time lapse. And I recorded, I want to say, about 10 hours of content. And I narrowed it down to, I want to say this video is going to be about 20 minutes long. And the reason I don't have, that I'm doing the audio over, or the voice over the audio again, and cut out all the audio, was just recording, just microphone failures. I'm working on that, and I don't know what it is about using Discord with my recording software sometimes, but the game sounds and the micro and the call sounds get really weird, and so you have the game coming in at, say, 10, but then you have the Discord call coming in at, like, 100, and I really don't want you guys losing your hearing or blowing out your eardrums by accident just because of the weird audio, so... I just cut that out and figured we could have it like this again. So also kind of the design idea behind this little entryway, why didn't I ruin it, why didn't I make it look all used up, I should call it, is I figured that for the most part the gate that has now got a big old hole in it probably would have protected the inside of this mine from being ruined by just, I guess, the elements. Since, I mean, all that's really going into there is a nice sloping uh, stairwell. But it is also nice to just have some just a little bit of difference. And also having the lanterns hang off of the scaffolding and the other things like that, I think just kind of add to the whole archaeological dig site idea. But I definitely like using lanterns, at least in an underground area. So I think I might start doing that. At least, you know, have a little sign up saying, if you're going to be using the mine make sure to use lanterns because realistically speaking lanterns are a renewable light source because we have our iron farm you can use charcoal to make torches and you can also grow trees to make sticks so that being said we don't really have to worry about running out of iron for lanterns and they do add that much extra and also, I can trade for lanterns in the village trading hall. So it's not that big of a deal should we come across a problem. So, I think the worst part about this whole project, though, is trying to fit that storage or that sorting system into our area. Just because of the fact that. It's all behind stone, and we don't really have a way to see through the stone. And it's, uh, it's a little bit of a pain. But I also do want to talk about kind of future episode ideas and what I want to do with the server. So, as I mentioned earlier, I do want a slime farm. I also would like to remake the gold farm. 
except I want to use magma blocks. And the best way I know how to get magma blocks is one of two ways. Either going down to the nether and digging like a madman and praying that I don't die in lava and losing all my stuff. Because that's frustrating and no fun. But I can also use the slime farm and have a blaze farm as well, which I would like to do. And then we can use the blaze farm as well as the slime farm and make magma cream, which will in turn get us magma blocks. Which then we can use to make our gold farm. And I know that we have a ton of gold inside of the storage system already, but I would like to have a Piglin Trading Center eventually, and I kind of need a large amount of gold for that. And gold isn't a renewable resource yet since we don't have our farm anymore. Also, I would like I want to go to the end. I want to I want to beat the end. I'm tired of not having shulker boxes. I mean, on my single player world, I got a little spoiled because I had killed the ender dragon. I got shulker boxes and I had a deep storage unit for all the things like stone and cobblestone that I got tons of. I ended up making a deep storage unit for my iron farm. Just because since it's a single player world, I can AFK on it all day long and have no problems. And then a witch farm also I feel is necessary. And here's why. Once we get to the end, and once we beat the Ender Dragon, we're going to be getting a Leitra, or a Leitra, however you say it. And we need rockets. Rockets are the key to properly using them. Well, I say properly using them, but they definitely do help. Because if you want to fly long distance, you're going to need rockets. And you need a reliable source of gunpowder to get rockets. But, there's also the problem of, I like doing redstone projects. And how am I supposed to do redstone projects if I keep running out of redstone? So, eventually, we're going to be making a witch farm and I've already found a witch hut that I want to use the only problem is we need to dig a perimeter and for the perimeter itself at least the digging of the perimeter I'm not going to record a lot of it I'm saying that right now and here's why it's going to be, from the centermost point of that witch hut, it's going to be 128 blocks out in every single direction. This project is going to take a long time. And I would like to, realistically, I'd like to get the entire witch farm episode when we get there in one, just one half hour episode. I don't want to have another gold farm episode thing with, you know, Gold Farm, part one, part two, part three. Unless, of course, you guys like something like that. I mean, as of currently, I need to be able to have um, some warning. I'm usually recording these and editing these a few weeks out. I mean, currently, I'm recording this one, or at least I'm putting this together on the 18th of August. 
So, just for a little bit of time frame. And I mean, I haven't been doing... I haven't been recording in a while. I've been lazy. And I'll admit that. I mean, I just haven't been in the mood to record at all. And watching this video back as I narrate, I can see that I am so wrong building this thing. I mean, those of you that are watching are probably sitting there screaming at me going, what are you doing, you stupid, stupid man? And the only thing I have to say is, I remember recording this episode, and it was early at late as heck. But that's still no excuse, because I like doing redstone. And the redstone torches are off, the repeaters are powering into the hoppers, it's, it's a mess. And how you're probably supposed to do that is, it's supposed to be the comparator, two blocks out with redstone dust, then one block down, and then that's going to power a repeater, and that's going to power, and the repeater's going to go into a block, and on the other side of the block is going to be the redstone torch, and then in front of that is going to be the hoppers, if that makes any sense. But, I also have the problem of, I still don't have good internet, and I cry. Um, I also want to try to make more, make my episodes in a longer span of time. Because usually how my episodes work is I record for, let's just say, three hours. I sit down with my idea of what I want to do. And then I record in about three hours. I take about three hours to knock out recording. And then I sit down and I edit. Editing takes three to four hours. It takes at least as much time as it does to record to edit. I mean, this one's taking considerably longer. I mean, I would say less time, but at the same time, I had to sit there and sift through the hours of building the stupid pillars. But, I mean, then I have to sit there and I can't, with my current processing power on my computer, I can't produce videos quickly. Because even though this is Minecraft and it's got really bad graphics and... It's not you know, one of those high definition games. I still use the HD processing for all my videos because I would like you guys to be able to read whatever I'm looking at or anything else or anything that pops up in chat or any of the signs or any username or anything else. And I mean, it also just makes the quality better because I'm trying to produce videos that I would enjoy watching. And if I made a video in one of the about 15 second things, I just would not enjoy it because the quality is so bad. Now, I'm pretty sure I've touched on this topic before where I've did a side-by-side -side comparison, and you just, you can't read anything with the low-definition 15-second one. But, at least uh, the video quality comes out right. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head of any other projects I'd like to do with the server. I mean, there's always the Guardian Farm that I'd like to do, and that one's not, it's not bad. One problem is, it's the same problem with the uh, Guardian Farm as it is with the Witch Farm, is it's going to be a lot of work, so I'm going to have to figure out where exactly I want to put it, well not where to put it because it's not like I can move this thing, but when I want to do it, when I have the time, who can help me, because 
I mean, I love doing large projects, but I don't want to do large projects like that alone. I mean, I've built gold farms by myself. I've built witch farms by myself. I've done this stuff. I just don't want to. I mean, for those of you that have done large, like, grotesquely large projects, it's... It's god awful alone. So, I mean, the redstone stuff, I have no problem doing by myself. But it's, it's the digging and everything else. You need friends. And that's what's so great about Minecraft, is you can always call your friends and say, Hey, uh, you want to jump on and help me out? And sometimes they will. And usually all it takes is one extra person and you're good to go. But... As for the actual sorting system itself, it's built. All I have to do now is I have to go through, I have to do all of the figuring out what goes where, and I have to figure out the exact amount of items that can go in there. If I remember correctly, it's 41. And then you need to block out everything else, but you need 41 in that second slot. However, I could be wrong. But, thank you guys for watching. Again, I apologize for the shorter episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!